a lot of news today for this daily podcast. First of all, it was reported this morning that in the intel community, our agencies, our corrupt CIA, NSA, CIA, you name it, BBC, as the, as the Beatles used to say, reported that there are 45,000 incinerated mass graves in Wuhan, China. Obviously, the Chinese, the Chai Coms, the communist Chinese have been lying, but this thing got out of control. And as I've said many times before, we have class action lawsuits. We have a criminal case in The Hague. I have a case in Israel to get to the justice here, to get to the truth. We have experts. This was a bio weapon. There's no doubt about it. And the march goes on. The beat goes on. But how is it that the intel agencies just released this information? As I've said, they had to know from the get-go, from the very beginning, that there was a release of bioweapon coronavirus in Wuhan, China. And either they kept that from the president of the United States to set him up so this pandemic would occur and he would lose the next presidential election on criticism that he hadn't acted quickly enough, or the president did know and he was so preoccupied with the witch hunts and the impeachments that frankly, it went by the wayside. In effect, that's what happened during Clinton's impeachment too, is that Osama bin Laden was building up for 9-11 at the time of that impeachment. Of course, Bill Clinton could have cared less about Osama bin Laden. He had many times to arraign him uh, in Africa before that and let the opportunity pass. So I'm not equating Clinton with Trump, but it is troubling here. And the fact that we now know that there were 45,000 incinerated bodies buried in mass graves in China, probably more, just in Wuhan, tells you what we're dealing with here. Now, there's also news this morning that was obviously leaked by the deep state. They're not happy with the prospect of Trump potentially pardoning Roger Stone. And as I've said before, Roger Stone should not be pardoned. There is no excuse for lying under oath, threatening witnesses, or obstructing justice. I don't care who you are. And the issue of whether or not Comey and McCabe and the rest of them should have been indicted, that's one thing. And we're working on that with our citizens' grand juries. We've already indicted Robert Mueller. These people will be indicted and tried after the coronavirus subsides and we can convene our citizens' grand juries. But the justice system cannot work if people lie under oath. But what was released this morning were the warrants that the FBI had served on Stone when they raided his house. Now, they went in with 23 agents. Stone is an admirer of the mafia. In fact, that came up during his criminal, criminal trial. So I'm not sure you can blame the FBI for taking precautions. You know, the mafia is not a real nice bunch of people. And given the fact that Stone is an admirer of the mafia, the FBI may have concluded that he had some connection there. But what was released today shows communications that got the warrants for that raid with Julian Assange. And that's something that had been denied by Stone. And Stone is trying to profit off the president. He's trying to sell his influence in these emails. It's tying the president as well to Stone. And this is why the president's ill-advised if he's going to take the advice of half-wits like Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson and now I'm, I'm really disappointed in Mike Huckabee. I always liked him, but he's going along to get along at Fox News to pardon Stone. This is not an injustice. He got 40 months. He'll probably be out in a year to 18 months. And he needs to learn a lesson. And there needs to be an example set to other people not to lie under oath. The justice system can't function that way. But more importantly, they're trying to tie Stone closely to the president here. If you look at the emails that have been reported. And that's not good because the Democrats are going to use that to try to defeat the president in the fall. And you can now expect Hillary Clinton's throwing her hat back in the ring. We got Michelle Obama. They're going to have what they perceive to be a very strong female candidate. Not strong at all. These people are criminals. But the independent voters, the 20 million in the middle, can be swayed. And it just takes a couple swing states like Pennsylvania or Wisconsin or Michigan to turn this election in favor of the Democrats. And if we get Joe Biden, who will probably die in office, given his poor health, assuming he makes it that far, or maybe he resigns, you know, decides he wants to go off doing coloring books when he gets uh, severe dementia or Alzheimer's, you're going to have Hillary Clinton or Michelle Obama as president. And that's a frightening prospect. So the president needs to stay 
miles away from Roger Stone. Roger Stone is not the president's friend. Roger Stone has profited off the president for decades. Uh, he relishes the fact that he may be going to prison. He claims that he's now found God. And the next day, of course, he went to a strip club. That's not terribly believable. That's the playbook for people to get caught with their hand in the cookie jar. I admire people that do find God, but I do not believe that Roger Stone has found God. You remember Dick Morris, when he got caught with a prostitute, he was Clinton's advisor, political consultant that helped him win the election in 1996. When he got caught, he automatically had a miraculous conversion from Judaism to becoming an evangelical, literally in a matter of seconds. Well, that helps in terms of fundraising for legal defense funds and other things. And I'm an evangelical myself, so I don't mean that negatively. But I want to tell you something here. The president needs to stay away from Roger Stone and he better not pardon him. That's the news for today. Go to freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org. Join our citizens' class actions against the communist Chinese. Join and support our criminal case in The Hague, Holland, and our case in Israel, and we're going to be filing cases in other places around the world. The communist Chinese, not the Chinese people who are good people, again, about 30% are plaintiffs in our cases. They're patriotic people. But the communist Chinese need to be brought to their knees. They need to be legally destroyed. Uh, they need to be taken out in an appropriate way. And there's no reason for the American taxpayer to pay for the huge damage that they have done which has nearly destroyed this country and many other countries around the world. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, sign up for our class actions, contribute with tax deductible contributions. This is very expensive. We have to bring in other lawyers. We already have over 2000 plaintiffs. Please support us and stay safe. And God bless you and your family. God bless America and God save America. I'll be back tomorrow with another special podcast of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Until then, share it. You can find it at freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org, Spotify, iTunes, Roku, Amazon Fire, Facebook. You can find it on Twitter and also on our website. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.